welcome to episode 102 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 6th of February. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today we have some knitting, some dressmaking, some bobbin lace and some confessions. <laughs> And also some information on my shop update, which will be the 7th of February at 7pm. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic. And my website, crafthousemagic.co.uk, is where you can find the show notes for the podcast. Um, but also I have my online shop there, so you can find my handmade project bags, hand-dyed yarn, stitch markers, progress keepers, and now higher, higher needles. So that's exciting. Um, we have two make-alongs going on at the moment. We have the Retro Mal, which is any craft and anything linked to anything retro, really. <laughs> I like tenuous links, so that's absolutely fine. Um, that's in the Ravelry group, but we've also got the Right Around the Corner shawl um, knit along. And it's for this lovely shawl here. I've finished mine, um, but don't be put off. Come and join in and make yours. I'm going to be running the make-along or the knit along until the end of February, so you still have plenty of time to join in if you want to because I pretty much knitted this in a couple of weeks really it is a very quick knit because you don't have to think too much you can just get on with it and just pick two lovely yarns that you enjoy using plus if you've got anything that's knitted either in my yarn or anything vaguely retro related you can double dip in the retro mal as well <laughs> so don't forget to do that um, we also have another make along that's going to come soon so Becky and I from the Back to Blighty podcast have got something up our sleeves. So watch this space. <laughs> that is all I'm saying. <laughs> so I think that's all the chatty bit finished. Let's go on to the good stuff. So first of all, knitting. I've been really enjoying knitting on my Adventina shawl and it's getting rather big. So I'll start from the end that I've already showed you. Um, so it's like a chevrony shaped shawl um, and I am basically just knitting um, all the garter stitch bit. There are lacy bits in the pattern but I've just omitted them because I want a nice relaxing knit and I've knitted since the stitch markers since the last podcast and I'm on this section um, where it's quite a sort of burgundy purpley bit but I've just started um, on a bit that's a little bit more bluey colours. See if I can get a better picture for you bit of a close-up there so that's how I'm getting on you can see me through it a little bit <laughs> but there we go um this turquoisey purpley yarn I don't think you can really see it yet um but that's how it looks in the cake and this is some yarn that I picked up from I think it was from Edinburgh Yarn Festival um last year and it's from Martin's Lab and it's a little mini I picked up as a bit of a souvenir from Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And it's in, on a singles base, which um, I haven't used in this shawl before. So that's a bit of fun to use. And it's called Prismatic, this colourway. Loving it. I'm very excited because now I'm going to go into the blues and greens on this shawl. So that's going to be fun. I love a bit of blue and green. Um, so the Adventina shawl is by Katrin Schubert. And most of the minis that I've used in the shawl that are sort of plain colours um, were dyed by Fee from Flourish Fibres. And she does a lot of natural dyeing, so it's really cool to see how she's managed to get um, these lovely colours just by naturally dyeing things from plants and um, what have you. So I'm enjoying knitting on that. It's about the size of my arm span at the moment. <laughs> And I still have quite a few minis I'm going to put in there. So hopefully it's not going to be too huge. We shall see. <laughs> so that's the first project I've been working on. But I have a cast on. I'm very excited to show you this. So this is a black and white printout. But you get the idea. So it's the Guanwin sweater. Um, and the pattern is by Verena Kors. And I shall put a better picture on the screen so you can see what it looks like in the end. Um, but I'm actually going to make it into a cardigan. So I'm going to knit it um, with a section um, through the 
sort of lacy bit here that's that's stocking stitch so that I can then steek it afterwards and add some button bands so that it's a cardigan and I think it'll be more wearable for me because I do think that I wear cardigans a lot more than I wear sweaters so that's what I'm going to do. I am knitting it in my purple haze colourway um, so that's sort of a dusky purple colour and I've had the yarn caked up for ages. <laughs> <laughs> so it is on my make nine though so that's good this is the second project of my make nine knitting list for 2020 and it's only february i'm so pleased <laughs> so far i have got this much <laughs> so it's not looking a lot like a cardigan just yet and i've managed to get it tangled somehow already oh dear that's not good progress is it i'll have to sort it out later but i'll see if i can just show you a tiny bit of what I've done so far so it's a provisional cast on that's why there's grey yarn at the bottom I've just used the cotton to do a crocheted provisional cast on and like I said I've just added um, some stocking stitch just at the front there so that I can do a steak afterwards but I love a good steak <laughs> so what I did um, I'm, I always change garments quite a lot to try and get them to fit me so I just wanted to talk to you briefly about how I chose my size. So I measured my upper bust measurement, which is round here. You can't really see what I'm doing. So right round there and round my back. And I used that to choose the size that I cast on for the yoke. Because I do find that I've got quite narrow shoulders. And then what I'm going to do is once I've got past that yoke, I'll then increase to get to the next size up. So I'm choosing size 7 um, to knit the yoke. And then I'm going to be um, adding some stitches to go up to the size 8 just after the lacy bit um, to get it to fit. And I'm going to um, change this slightly in that the original pattern... I think this is a bit more illustrative even though it's grey um, but it's quite fitted around the waist but I haven't got much of a waist so what I'm going to do is just stick to the same stitch count as around the bust um, straight down and plus then it'll be a lot quicker because <laughs> I think that'll be more flattering on me anyway. Um, I've chosen size 5 for the arms because um, for some reason my arms are slimmer i'm quite pleased with that <laughs> compared to the rest of me um so what i'm going to do is when i'm c picking stitches up around the underarm and things because it's a top down um sweater i'll make sure that i've got the right number of stitches for size five rather than the size seven that i've knitted the yoke for wow this is the idea anyway we shall see um so i'm excited about that that's going to be a bit of fun um so I've like I've shown you I've started round the neck but it last night I did a swatch undid it and then did this so it didn't take me too long and because it's in DK I'm sure that's going to knit up really quickly um so I forgot to say what base it is actually this is my DK merino base in the purple haze colorway um so this is a very nice soft yarn but I think that it's reasonably durable as well but I do love a nice squishy cardi so that's going to be loads of fun I can't wait to start knitting on that again so that's all my knitting I think um it is I don't know where the time's gone this week although I do have four tops to show you in the sewing section so I shall um, tell you about that in a minute but I found a new podcast that I've been really enjoying so it's Trish and Arthella and they are the best day ever crafting podcast and I think the actual YouTube channel is done by Trish and she's called Tie-Dye Diva and oh the stuff that they've making it's really inspirational and I've I especially noted this necklace that they'd been knitting and it's called the Orbits necklace and I'm, I've got that on my list now, I want to do that. That looks like loads of fun for a special little bit of yarn as well. Um, I think it's for an Aran weight yarn but I'm sure you could get away with doing it in finer yarns as well if you've got scraps left over. Um, but there were so many other things on the podcast that I really enjoyed as well. There was a beautiful tunic dress um, that Trish had made, absolutely gorgeous. Um, 
and I've watched not the latest podcast but a couple of podcasts before I think because I'd had it on my list for ages to watch and I didn't get around to it but I have now and I'm catching up on all the podcasts at the moment. I had a phase where I just didn't watch them um, while I was working. I've been listening to audiobooks and things but I'm now back on to watching lots of podcasts again so I've been enjoying that so go and check them out. Again they're the best day ever crafting podcast and I will put links in the show notes um, if you're finding it difficult to find. So let's go on to the sewing section next. So Barbara is going to help me show you four new tops that I finished sewing this weekend. Come on Barbara. Thank you very much Barbara. So she's presenting the first of the four t-shirts. So this one is the Cashmere Concord pattern. Now the Cashmere Concord is by Cashmere <laughs> Oh dear, so this pattern is by Cashmere and I picked up a PDF um, pattern off their website so it's nice and easy, I could just print it out at home straight away. I do like a PDF pattern, I find it easy, then at least I know I've got it on the computer so if I need to print it out again it's there, it's fine. <laughs> so I did the round, um, well the medium neck because you've got a choice of doing a V neck and one that's higher up as well but I chose the this neck a medium one and also the short sleeve with a little bit of a cuff there is a little tab thing that you can have on but I thought I'd do this without so that I could wear it under cardigans a bit more because I have got a couple where I made the tab and although the tab is very cute um, it just shows a little lump underneath your t-shirt if you've got a cardigan no it shows a little lump under your cardigan if you're wearing it underneath I'm getting myself tongue-tied today it's dreadful isn't it um, so the fabric that I made this in I picked up from the um, Festival of Quilts last year I think yes definitely but I do remember that when I got home from the Festival of Quilts um, I had no record of what shop it was that I bought it from so that's no good is it so it's like a tealy blue with some um, like olive green stripes on it um, and I love these colours I especially enjoy making when you've got a striped fabric doing it in the opposite direction as the rest of the top so it just gives a bit of a contrast there love it um, so I do like the fit of the cashmere patterns they take account um, for busty ladies I use the G to H cup um, because it's American sizes that's I think I'm about an E cup um, in UK sizes so I pick the um, G to H sizes of patterns and you there's I think that there's I did write it down so there's a C to D cup an E to F cup and a G to H cup and I chose the latter um, and I just think that they just fits really nicely around the bust. Really enjoy um, making a pattern that actually fits really nicely. So that's my first of my t-shirts. I just have to say actually with the cashmere patterns they are a one centimetre seam allowance um, so you have to make sure that you've got the right seam allowance for a cashmere pattern. I did make one where I took a, a centimetre and a half um, because I completely forgot which is ridiculous really but just bear that in mind. Um, but I do love this and I made sure I did the, two, the one centimetre seam allowance on this so that's good. <laughs> it fits. <laughs> So that's top number one. Thank you, Barbara. Can you have a quick change and show us the next one? Thank you, Barbara. So Barbara is now wearing my Frankie t-shirt and this is a Tilly in the Buttons pattern, but I have made a few modifications. So I made the sleeve shorter. Um, I just marked on the pattern where I wanted, I thought I wanted the length of the sleeve to be and then I've cut a separate version so that I know um, I keep this to do short sleeve tops with and I also made a modification to the neckline on this Frankie t-shirt where I used the Agnes um, Tilly in the Buttons pattern for the neckline and transferred it onto these pattern pieces because I found that the Frankie t-shirt neckline was a bit high for me so I enjoy it to be a little bit lower generally. The fabric I used is some art gallery fabrics and actually this one and the other two t-shirts are all made of art gallery fabrics jersey um, and oh I forgot to mention as well the one I've already showed you is all a medium weight jersey um, and so are these other three for a sort of t-shirt weight really nice I really like the quality of the art gallery fabrics I've got a couple of t-shirts that I've already made in the fabric and it's lasted really nicely I hate making things and then they're not washing very well so um, 
this bit's going to be a bit boring because I've got three tops that are exactly the same shape to show you. <laughs> but they're pretty fabrics, so that's all good. Um, so this is a nice pale, minty, sort of greeny, turquoisey colour. And I just thought it was lovely and delicate. And this sort of, um, it's quite a loose fit on the Frankie and quite flattering. So I thought it's ideal for this fabric. Top number three. Can you do a change for us, Barbara? Thank you very much, Barbara. So this is another, well, the Frankie pattern um, with the modifications on the neckline and the sleeves. And I just um, whipped it up the same as the other one. And I just thought that this would make a nice um, outfit with just for a pair of jeans, really. Um, it's almost sort of like a solid, really. There's not much of a pattern on it, but I just thought it gives a bit of interest. Also, if you get a bit of gravy down your top, I'm sure that's not going to show very much. <laughs> in this print but there we go <laughs> and top number four I'm actually wearing so I'll have to take my right around the corner shawl off to show you oops and I'll take my cardi off so you can see it a little bit better so this is another Frankie t-shirt and you can see uh, hopefully you can see around the back as well <laughs> that it's a nice sort of drapey front so it covers the tummy a little bit and uh, I really enjoy wearing this neckline I forgot to put jewellery on today that's a bit silly isn't it <laughs> I suppose it doesn't really matter when you're wearing a shawl anyway so there we go I'll pop my shawl back on because it's a bit chilly so four tops ready um, to fill my wardrobe with more handmade things rather than um, shop bought. So there we go. Thank you very much for your help, Barbara. So that's what I've been sewing over the last week. To be honest, I cheated. I actually did the sewing um, for the four t-shirts mostly the week before, but I hadn't um, sort of stitched down the hems or anything. But I had pinned it all ready, so it was quite a quick job to do at the weekend. But that was very exciting to finish something off. Um, I've also been looking at my coat pattern or jacket pattern that I've got on my Make Nine list, which is a Vogue one, which I'll pop a picture up here. Um, I dug out the fabric for it and I was deciding whether to um, line it as well. The actual pattern isn't lined, but I think I'm going to pick up some viscose or use some from my stash um, just to line it to make it look a bit more fancy I think so watch out for that I also noticed that Cashmirette have a new cardigan pattern out and it looks perfect <laughs> I have some fabric that I bought to make the Blackwood cardigan but I think I might make this instead because I think it might make a better fit because Cashmirette obviously allow for different bust sizes as well so might have to do that this weekend instead of my coat which is on my list <laughs> bit naughty oh dear I also noticed that a fellow vlogger that does um, a weekly vlog is Dawn's Days and Dawn does um, a little video every week of what she's been up to and sometimes she does little tutorials and she'd done a tutorial of how to make um, a jar into a jar to fill with buttons and then put a pin cushion on the top I thought that was quite cool so I might have to make one of those um, I will leave the link to this in the show notes so the um, her, her channel's called Dawn's Days um, if you're looking for something else to watch as well I think most of her vlogs aren't necessarily craft but she does do the tutorials like I said so my bobbin lace next so I've been working on a piece from this book um, and I've already actually made the one that's on the front cover but I only did it in blue colours um, and I've made a good start or in fact I finished the pieces um, for this second piece and this is made out of two sections one here and one there that you layer on top of each other and I finished the two pieces but obviously I haven't sewn any of the ends in um, so they look a little bit of a mess I'm going to mount them on some blue felt hopefully that's focusing I'm going to mount them on some blue felt but obviously all the ends will be disappeared um, and hopefully they'll look a bit better than a big mess of threads that they do look now <laughs> but you get the idea um, so I'm going to frame it like the one I did before and then there'll be a bit of a set. I'm hoping to do three pieces to go on the wall next to each other. So that's how I've got on with my bobbin lace. So I have my confessions next. <laughs> So on the weekend we went to um, a Maker's Bazaar which was like a craft fair in Norwich City and I happened to find some yarn. 
<laughs> so we were looking around and I happened to see my Instagram friend Amanda and she came and said hello and I then saw that her daughter had got a store and she'd got some beautiful hand dyed yarns um, and these are the ones I'd bought some beautiful colours there I'm not sure if I'll put them together but I might use them in some little scrappy projects but they're really pretty so Shannon's shop is called Blue Fern Yarns there we go and she's got a website bluefernyarns.co.uk um, where you can find her hand dyed yarn she's got for sale and she's got some lovely crocheted um, toys on the stand and um, some beautiful shawls as well that she had on display um, so that was lovely to see and the whole craft fair had some really lovely things and they were on sale as well so that was amazing so I had a lovely day I forgot to take some footage which is a bit silly really I should have took some and put some on the end of the podcast but um, I'll have to make sure I remember next time we go somewhere so that's my yarny purchases but I also bought some fabric oh as I've made four tops this week I'm allowed <laughs> so I watch a lady called Stitchy B on YouTube and she has a fabric shop and she has videos that talks about um sewing related things to dressmaking and she was talking about this grey t-shirt fabric that she would got in her shop and it's supposed to I think it's called like the perfect t-shirt or the perfect jersey and I thought well I'll pick up a meter and see what it's like and this is a lovely sort of fine jersey perfect for sort of thinner t-shirts for summer and things and I thought I'd pick up a grey because grey is always useful so I was pleased about that um, very good customer service and beautifully packaged as well it's always nice to support small businesses um, I don't know if there's any more information it just says um, stitchyb.co.uk for the website and she's also on Instagram as well but do check out her YouTube channel she does some really nice little videos on understanding what fabrics are for and also um, when she's sewn certain projects she'll show you and you can get inspiration from there so definitely recommended and then I don't know why I just thought oh I need some more print <laughs> I was looking on um, plush addicts uh, shop and I just saw this and I thought oh my goodness I need it birds on a sky <laughs> <laughs> so this is a cotton jersey um, and it's got spandex in it but it's a very fine cotton jersey actually and it's got amazing drapes so I was really pleased about that so the actual fabric is by Miss and Moose collection for Polytex Stuffin I will leave a link in the show notes to um, the Plush Addict website where I got it but I do love these birds Hopefully I'm showing it the right way. <laughs> but I just got a meter because I can make a short sleeve t-shirt out of a meter. Because um, it doesn't seem too bad in the stash then, one meter, does it? <laughs> and I thought, because it was, I think it was like, if you spend £40 you get free postage. Why I needed to, <laughs> to spend loads more, I thought, oh, I'll just buy some other viscose. So I needed to buy some fabric. Um to make the indigo smock from Tilly and the Buttons so I had a little look at the viscose fabrics and this is the one I decided to get I thought it was a bit sort of slightly understated it's upside down actually it's supposed to be that way <laughs> um, but I thought that that be, would be really pretty I did originally pick a very floral fabric but then they told me there wasn't any left so this was my second choice but I do think that that's lovely the print is slightly bigger than I thought it would be um, but I still like it and I think that will make a lovely um, indigo top which is like a, a sort of smock sort of shaped top nice and floaty and I thought viscose would be perfect for that so I picked up a couple of meters so that's all my naughty purchases it's fine <laughs> I've just got my shop update next so there's just one thing I wanted to talk to you about which I'm going to pop it in my shop this week so 7th of February at 7 p.m. GMT I'm also going to be including some one meter cables um, that are for the miniature needles so um, that's 40 to 42 inches um, cable or 100 centimeter cable um, for the miniature needles which are at the 
two millimeters 2.25 2.5 millimeter needles i just thought i'd offer a longer cable as well in case you do two at a time socks and you prefer um the longer cable size i've listed the miniature needles and cables as a separate listing because these cables will not fit on the needles that are bigger than 2.5 millimeters so the cables and the needles are listed in the same listing you just have to select different things in the drop down and um, the price is separate for the cable or the needle but you I, that should be relatively self-explanatory hopefully <laughs> if you have any questions just drop me a message on crafthousemagic at gmail.com and i shall do my best to answer it so next week i'm hoping to have some new bag and yarn designs in the shop um in the update on the must be the 14th roughly friday after anyway <laughs> I will keep you posted and talk about it in next week's podcast anyway um, but I'm excited to share some of those designs with you um, I think that's all for today so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more and I shall see you in next week's episode bye